everyone and welcome to week 36 of the Gran Turismo weekly race guide here in 2021. Bit of a weird week this week, I've got to be honest. And in terms of the races that happen, they're pretty weird too. In the background then, you can see a Dehatsu Copen uh, at Goodwood. So this is a bit of an interesting combo. Can you Copen with the... No, well, I will not go there. Let's have a look at the race details then. We're racing four laps here at Goodwood. It's a grid start and we are on the sports medium tyres. This Copen has tons of grip for the sports medium tyres. Although it's a bit of a boat. So the weight really does roll around in the car. Which does mean the racing can get a little bit messy. Let's jump to the race then and let's have a look exactly what happened as well as a lap guy to boot. We are then at the start. Look at these cars. They look so funky, don't they? They're like little toys. I remember walking past one going to school. But there we have it. The grid order for you. Max power up there. Uh, one of the critical things with this car, Max power did tell me in chat, but I already knew this because I sneakily had a look at the rank one time at the time. Uh, who short shift. Short shifting is your best friend here. I do put trash control on one. Just a bit of safety here. And then I'll turn it off as I change gear there. And then we're golden. We can race on happy days so short shifting and you can see everybody just falling into place brake balance there you go lovely stuff minus one uh, i always do this on most road car road cars minus one is just easy because it basically just puts a little bit towards the front stops any weird oversteer happening and it just makes the braking a lot more efficient so you can see here we're right at the back of this train of cars here uh, i don't know whether there's any train called the copen uh, the copen Cope. i don't know why i'm singing that anyway let's continue on through here so badgers towards the inside uh, same with Blitz here. And I'm on the outside. At this point, I'm always like, nah, I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to let off early. Back out of this completely, really. I don't want to get involved in that. And you can see why they're Blitz and Madman there. Just come together and Madman going to come on. And unfortunately for Badgers, goes off. But we'll take those. Buy one, get one free. Happy days. Bug off offers are perfect. We look down the inside of Blitz here. Uh, but I break early because I didn't really fancy the dive. And good job. Because Blitz decides he wants to lawn mow the lawn. So round we go then. P10. And you can see we're already losing the group in front here. So kind of critical to get past. Let's advance a bit further on then. We leave the chicane. And we see an indicator. I think that was accidentally put on to be honest with you. We go towards the right. Little tap there. Not sure what that was all about. We're going to head towards turn one side by side. Which is very sketchy at the best of times. As you can see the weight really rolls on the car. Um, and I managed to judge it correctly. I did give just enough space here. And we go through there fairly clean, to be honest. It was pretty good racing. So, uh, yeah. Got two blitz. That was all good. Uh, as we're going to continue side by side then through this right-hander then. It's all flat out. A little bit of contact there. Obviously, he doesn't want to get pushed out here. But I will never do that. Don't you worry. As we head towards this fast right then. So, again, I, I let off last time. Got out of the way. Blitz does that this time. It's a smart thing to do, especially if you're on the outside. And then I'm going to come into here. Break. And just try and keep the car balanced as possible. You can see that I'm not doing any overly aggressive maneuvers. Uh, as we then head towards this right, which uh, I dropped a third initially. I'm not sure why I did this, but uh, this is a break-in zone. Uh, and unfortunately, Blitz gets absolutely punted from behind there by Madman. And uh, yeah, sends us off. So uh, thank you for that, Madman. Much appreciated. A uh, bit frustrating. Can't really do much about it. So we really lose track of the group ahead. I'd say a bit of a weird one, this one. But we get punted. So hey, not clickbait. We're going to go to a lap guide now. So head towards turn one. What I want you to do is actually just let off. I don't want you to break, but let's off at their Marshall box. Allow the car to just roll into the corner. Keep the weight very balanced. And look at this now. So I'm just rolling. I went on the throttle a little bit there. Now just balancing the car a little bit. Throttle. Aim for 90 miles an hour if you can. I dropped to 88 there at one point. I come through the corner. I've not changed gear. The car is the most balanced it will ever be doing that method. Just letting off. Let the car roll. The weight is neutral for the most part until you start turning and the weight shifts slightly. But at least it's only going one way. Continuing on towards this fast right, once again, what I would recommend is just to let off at the Marshall box. Literally let off. And as you go through this corner, you're going to drop to fourth gear. That's going to allow the engine braking to slow the car down. It means you don't have to hit the brakes and cause any weird weight transfer issues. As you say, I come off. I do carry a bit too much speed. And as we come towards the right hand side, at the end of that tarmac is when you want to start braking. I've obviously gone a little bit too deep, a little bit fast there. Um, so I'm having to break a little bit earlier, but that's what your goal is to be on the right there. And then carry the speed through here. You don't want to drop below 80 miles an hour. We just do that. Happy days. Try and avoid the wheel spin as best as you can. The brake marker everybody hates coming up here. So you see these white dots as we're right on top of one and then they got two there. The second white dot is what I use as a brake marker. I have no other brake marker. It's a really hard corner to get a brake marker for, but that's what I use when it's clear. Obviously when it's not clear, it's very, very difficult and I've got to judge it with the, the, uh, the, brake markers on the left hand side 
Lost my thought process then for a second. Keep in fourth gear. Do not drop to third gear. This car loses so much power as you go up the res. So I'm shifting at halfway or just after halfway sometimes. You see, we've got a run on awful M Uranus. Well, that's the name and off. Uh, so we're going to come up to here and we are going to break this time. But on the left hand side, you've got this piece of tarmac here. Just after you pass this, you can see I've already come off the accelerator. I'm just rolling a little bit with the slipstream. But just after you pass that is when you're going to brake off gear. And then you want to, again, roll the car through the corner. I just have the brakes a little bit more there because I was carrying a bit too much speed. Again, just try and keep the car as balanced as possible. Coming into this last corner, the Marshall box. Once again, these Marshall boxes are in the perfect place here. You're going to brake. And then you're, you're braking early here, but you want to brake early. You want the car to just roll through the corner. Notice now, oh, we did a double brake there. We shouldn't have done that, but you should brake, let the car roll through, and the weight will stay very stable there. So you can see or hear uh, Uranus was in third gear. Fortunately, the wrong gear. So we actually get up to P8 in the end after that earlier incident. So not too bad. This race will have a lot of carnage, especially in the lower lobbies. So just be careful, to be honest with you. Um, you can have some good racing. We had a little bit there, but uh, very hard to get a really, really action-packed race. Race B then, and we're at Fuji. Put Fuji short, which is actually my more favourite version of Fuji, because we don't have that annoying chicane, which causes carnage, in my opinion, because everybody wants to dive and be the last of the breakers, and you end up with pile-ups, carnage into barriers, and all that random stuff. Now, in the background, you can see it's Group 4 as well, so a lot of the faster cars are going to come to the forefront. I'm not showing you my cars just yet, because that will reveal what happened in the race. And we're not doing that just yet. Let's have a look at the race details then. We're racing full laps here at Fuji Short. It's a rolling start and it's a racing medium tyre being used. So very grippy. Don't have to worry about the uh, rolling start in terms of corners. And you can have some good racing here. It just gets a little bit difficult. This race is pure, just weird. I mean, you'll see why shortly. Let's jump to the race then. Uh, and let's have a look exactly what happened. Here we are then at the start. And can you guess what car I'm in yet? Yes, I'm in the Ferrari. I accidentally got the P <laughs> P2 here. I was actually on to beat my time by five temps. And then I binned it on my last lap I did. I did two laps. I was on the third lap and I binned it. Uh, weirdly, I can explain how shortly in this race. But here we go with the start. Brake balance is what managed one today for the Ferrari. Brake balance is what you feel like at the time, by the way. So don't take it as gospel. Some people like more oversteer. I just try and make sure my braking efficiency is uh, top notch. We've got Jacko up ahead then in the RCZ. Weirdly, I was expecting more attenders, but uh, that didn't happen. Uh, so we're going to head towards turn one. We are going to go straight into all the lap guide here. So head towards turn one then. On the left hand side, you have the edge of the grandstand. Guess what you're using? The edge of it. So as you approach that, use that as your marker your reference. Most cars are going to be breaking around that point then and in towards the braking zone we go. Obviously, minute one. Oh, second one, lap one. It's going to be a little bit different on this lap, but I'm pointing out the markers for you. We've been here thousands of times in terms of Fuji as a whole. So most of these markers you will be familiar with. So on the left-hand side, you've got the light gray and then it goes white. The edge of that light gray is what I'm using now as a brake marker. You can, in fact, you could use a billboard I've just spotted, but I use the barrier color. It's more obvious to me. Uh, and I brake, turn in, try and cut quite a lot of that and try and avoid going too far wide on the exit there. You will go off a little bit here. So this corner, never brake. Just let off the throttle. Let the car roll through the corner. I'm just gonna balance the throttle here. You want the car to just turn by itself, no braking. Heading towards this left-hander then. The edge of the curb, uh, the last bit of the curbing on the left-hand side, sorry. That's what you're using as a brake marker in the Ferrari. Um, that's what I'm aiming for. You should be aiming for the 50-meter board as well. And then you're going to turn in, try and clip that edge like that and just put your foot down. It should grip. Most Group 4 cars will grip coming out of that corner as we're going to head down now, not to the chicane, but to the better layout, in my opinion. So we're going to head down here then. On the right-hand side, we normally use that, but we're not using the billboard this time. On the right-hand side, the Dunlop sign, as that hits the edge of your screen, that's when you're going to brake. As you're doing it in fourth in the Ferrari, you can do it in third as well. It's sort of different, depends on the gearing of the car. But you want to clip that inside, really try and push out the corner, be careful about running too wide. But then, don't do this. As you notice there, I tried to go too far to the left, come round, I spin, and then I'm going to come on the track in the cursed position. And then I'm like, where the heck is everybody? And then I look behind me, and I'm like, what on earth has gone on here? But we'll have a look at that after. But we're in the middle of a track guide there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance a bit further on here. So come through here again. Don't do what I just did. And we're going to head up towards this right hander. And on the right hand side, you've got that lamppost announcement thing. You can't get as close as you normally can because obviously out the chicane, you're carrying much less speed than what you've just done. However, try and get as close as you can. Don't go too far to the left like I did. And that's how I binned it in on my third run, by the way. So I did the same mistake twice, which is very bad. 
As you leave that corner and you come up to this left-hander, at the end of the curb, that's when you're going to start releasing the accelerator. Potentially tiny bit of brake. Sometimes you might just want to let off the throttle and allow the car to turn in. Mostly I'm just dabbing the brakes a little bit here, trying to slow the car down. Get it rotated as best I can. Here I go. I do run a little bit too wide there. Nothing major though. And then the last corner here on the right-hand side is the orange painted part of the barrier. That is what you're then going to use as your final brake marker. Many lines to take care. If someone's good diving down your inside, just be aware of it. That will happen. Going around the outside as well, it'll give you a better run out of the corner. But unfortunately, I didn't have that much racing. The group in front of me had a fantastic race, by the way. So Ozzy, Rat, and Cades, they did have a good race. You can have a good race here. Uh, you just need the people to have a race with. It's just very hard if you lose track of the groups, etc. And or you spin like I do. Very hard to get a race. So I thought I'd demonstrate that. And you know, I show you my mistakes. I am a bottle job. You've seen it here now, and I made the same mistake twice. So, an interesting one, at least we're not in the cursed position. Right, we're now going to head to the replay. Oh, why didn't I... I forgot to tell you what happened to the cursed position. I'll tell you after. But if you look at this, this is what happened. Notice that Scirocco there? It decides to stop. Now, why does it stop? I don't know. But let's have a look at it anyway. So, uh, we're getting ready for the start here. So, this is why the group was so far behind. And look at this for a chaos start. <laughs> Now, I think that Scirocco couldn't see anybody and the lobby was confused by it. And their console was and that slowed everybody up. Because that Ferrari got pushed off. I don't think the Scirocco could see that Ferrari. And I think that might have caused carnage during the race. Um, you are going to see a punt here as well, of course. But I did get away from the curse position. I forgot to show it in the video. Not sure why. But somebody spanned, basically. So I just took the place. It wasn't a natural overtake. As we see a punt there. A couple more punts. See how the reaction is here is with the cars? That's how I know he really couldn't see anybody. Race C then, and we're at Lego Maggiore GP in Group 3 cars, which is normally a Race B combo. I've put it on Race C, and there's actually some nice little strategies you can do here, where you can actually, you know, think about your strategy. You don't necessarily have to do the uh, go-to strategy, and it could work out really well. Really good combo, this, in my opinion. Uh, and one for those strategists amongst you. You can really start thinking about the race uh, in this race. Uh, race in this race. Anyway, let's have a look at the race details then. Uh, we're racing here for 10 laps. That's what I wanted to say, but I wasn't allowed to because you didn't see this. It's a rolling start. Just be careful of the last corner. You have to use the racing soft and medium tires. It's times two fuel, times six tires. That is all the information you need. Now, it's group three. The Supra is dominating the leaderboards. However, you can see in the background, I'm in the FT1. Once again, thank you to Driver's Room for this livery. They provided it a few weeks ago. We are using it again. And uh, yeah, this race... I'd say I found it quite good, to be honest with you. Although reading on GT Planet, some people are hating it. Some people are finding that they can't really overtake or do whatever. I actually think it's a fun race. And a few of the other people in this race thought the same. Let's jump to it then. And let's find out exactly what happened. Because you've already seen me get punted and bottle it. So what is possibly next? Here we are then at the start. See, as you can see, Supra, Supra, Supra. However, Consta, Romero, MB30, myself. We obviously have the same idea because we all chose the ft1 generally speaking when the supra is good the ft1 is good okay now, i prefer driving the ft1 over the supra which is why i chose it uh, and i'm assuming that's probably why they did as well now a big shout out by the way to quinton because quinton's in an rcz and what you will see in the distance is very pinky purple that's right folks he is in the flawless flawless not flawless flawless Peugeot RCZ. So it's got my face all over it. And you can check that out in the livery sector uh, sector section on Gran Turismo. I will be able to speak eventually and be able to see it there. Now, you did see my brake balance on plus three. And you're probably going, Tidge, it said zero initially. Yeah, I upped it throughout this race. I was trying to get a good idea. Plus three seems to work fine with the tires. Um, so coming through here then. It's just lying astern at the moment. There are a little, oh, there is a little bit of action. I see a lot of fast guys at the back here. On the medium tires, we'll still be able to overtake some of the softer runners. Uh, so it does get quite, you know, bunched up very quickly. I was just trying to get used to the medium tyres because I've done zero laps on them. I do see MB30 down the inside of Lockdown Sausage here, uh, which is Villa, if you've seen Villa in any videos. And down towards the last corner then. It's very close to this RCZ. And uh, we're going to try and look for the overtake shortly. However, uh, you see Quinton going the pits. Quinton tries the lap one pit stop. Now, I generally was thinking about it but then i'm like well i'm trying to make a video guide so i decided not to do it uh it was in my head because i read that it was two eight and three and seven but uh 
you know, one was on my mind because of all this traffic. Because it does cost you a lot of time. And this is where it's perfect. By the way, a big shout out to Lockdown Sausage. Just let me go. You don't have to do that, folks, by the way. If you are racing me, you can have a race with me. It's all good. As we come through here. Ooh, Billy gets it nearly all wrong there. And we're going to see a French driver off there in the Alfa Romeo. That's unfortunate for uh, Kunjani there. Um, so unfortunate for that driver off. So we gain another position. But uh, what I mean with the strategy, of course, Quinton comes in lap one. His tyres are going to be absolutely toast at the end. However... He gets the undercut and a big one as well at that in the meantime because he can just undercut all this fighting that's going on. Everyone tripping over each other. And I sort of realised a lot of people tripping over each other. So I expect a lot of people to come in this lap. Going for the overtake on Arsini then. They just run a little bit wide coming out of the uh, complex of S's there. So down the inside in towards Banky Boy. And we get it stopped. Now Badgers has just been left on the outside there unfortunately and lost a few positions. About to lose one more as we try around the outside. Very difficult to do this with uh, leaving space but uh, we leave a lovely amount of space there through the right then we have to lift here make sure there's room on the exit there's just enough room there for badgers uh, as we come back then and in towards the right hander we go and we're going to get this stopped beautiful bit of racing and look at that badgers unfortunately lose out and i think five positions there really unfortunate that so we carry on through there we're actually going to advance a bit further on then uh, and let's see who comes in on this lap so nobody pits on lap two weirdly and i was expecting it so I knew everyone was then going to pit on this lap. I could just sense it. So I was like, okay, everyone's going in now. I'm going to stay out just because I want to do something different and see what the tyres are going to be like. But uh, we have to get past Scotty very quickly here. So down the inside of the attendant and then in towards turn one. We become the last of the late breakers. And we get it stopped on the apex. Beautiful little overtake there. Uh, well played with Scotty as well. Noticing what was happening. And uh, good bit of racing. Shout out to you, Scotty. Uh, let's not beam you up though. Let's carry on with the racing. So we get to the end of the lap. And lap four, I'm going to come in. Now, I say, I think you could pit lap one, two, three, or four. Obviously, your tyre's going to be a bit toasted at the end if you start on the mediums and you come in on lap one, but uh, you've just got to be careful. Now, leaving the pits is very dangerous. It's not here, but uh, yes, there's your pit stop time plus 15 seconds. A different graphic to what it usually is. That one stands out more. So I just figured I'd use that graphic and keep the same graphic across the board for any like quick update information there. So what we're going to see now is the dangerous pit stop exit. As you see here, GTR just gets it slightly wrong, and I'm going to have to really back out of this. I just, there's a slight tap, but nothing major there. Because I'd already started the approach for the corner and break in. I wasn't expecting that. So GTR there, really unfortunate. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, yeah, we managed to get past safely there. But very, very, very close, I've got to say. As we fast forward a bit further on. So I did a video yesterday, do's and don'ts of racing. I will link it up at the end of the video, or link to it. Uh, and I wanted some moving on the break in. So we've raced this Italian before. We had a very good race last time. Uh, you notice all this reactionary braking. It's very scary. If you're doing that sort of reactionary braking, that's what causes punts and crashes. You've got to be so careful. The originally there, he moved right as I move right. Obviously, I'm then going to go left, but then he stops and then moves back left very quickly. Reactionary stuff like that, where you're just reacting to the driver behind, can cause crashes. You've just got to be so careful with that. Uh, it wasn't quite under the braking, but it was so close to it be so so careful we're having a good race here looking down the inside here the slight tap there that's that ping overlap that i was talking about a little bit of a flash of the hazards there to apologize it's all good mate all good we're racing here having a good little race as we head down towards the left hand of them and through the left we go uh, and they're on the medium tire remember because they started on the soft so they run very very deep and uh, we get that position happy days so up into p8 do you see what's happening yet yes cursed position up ahead here comes lost shelty though oh, sorry found shelty we found shelty comes out the pits it gives just enough space to mb there so i'm thinking oh right down the inside quickly shelty knows i'm gonna try that tries to pull back in very quickly doesn't quite work out but shelty keeps the position all the same good bit of racing from shelty uh, shelty knows that if you can last one one and a half laps the tires are then going to be crossing over in terms of their tire life and speed and shelty could keep that position so we know we have to get past Shelty quite quickly here. So I'm looking, thinking about it all the time. So I'm like, oh, should I go for it? Should I go for it? I was showing my nose a little bit there. I don't quite go for it. I was hoping Shelty would go deep. Shelty doesn't fall for that. What are you all on about? Shelty would never fall for that, would he? Uh, so we carry on up here. Shelty loves that Beetle, by the way, as we head towards the left-hander. Imagine if the Beetle Group 3 and the Megan Group 4, the FF car, was together. That'd be Shelty's perfect uh, car garage, that, wouldn't it, for the manufacturer series? So through there, you see Chelsea gets a penalty. I will explain that penalty in the lap guide. That is coming up, of course. So going on to this straight then, we've got Cyberman, we've got MB30, Shelty and myself. So you can see a lot of defending going on here. So I'm thinking, right, I'm going to go to the left here. Shelty trying to decide where to go. Stays towards the inside then. Uh, leave just enough room, I think. Okay, I'm going to try around the outside at Banky Boy. Very difficult to do. Uh, unfortunately, Shelty just understeers a little bit. Tries to correct it by really full luck. And unfortunately, with the tap, it just forces Shelty off. So he sort of blebbed it himself. <laughs> Poor Shelty. 
We always see him have a plebit or nail it, and this time it's a plebit once again. But huge shout out to Shelty. It's always nice to race Shelty as we come into the right hander then. So a big fight up ahead still between MB30 and Cyberman here as we come through this second right hander. Dad going to get slightly wrong there. You saw a little bit of oversteer and then a lot of oversteer there. So always go to the left as they come back on because they're going to understeer the days. I'll meet up into P7. Hey, look, it's the cursed position. Of course, we're going to fight for the cursed position. So through we go. We're going to head into a lap guide as well at the same time. So cross the start finish line, head towards turn one. We're going to use our favorite marker of them all. The blue van, it's there on the left-hand side. Pick it out, use that as a brake marker. Everyone's going to be going, Tinch is a 100-meter board up ahead. The blue marker is easier for me, so I use that. Uh, through we go then. And then towards this right-hander, at the end of that white little bit there, is when you want to be last of the late breakers into this corner. Generally, you want this line that I've taken because it gives you a nice line through the hairpin. Any wider on at the turn one, it's going to really compromise this corner. And then you don't want oversteer either, especially if you pitted earlier on. You're really trying to save those tires. Through here, slight lift, try and get the curb to turn you a bit. It doesn't work this time. So on the right -hand side, you've got this orange tire barrier. At the end of that is when you're going to brake. Because I've been compromised a little bit, I'm going to brake a little bit after that. But generally, if you're on the far left, it's the edge of your screen that. So try and use the curb again to pull you around a little bit. I don't manage that here. It's not a very good lap guide, is it? I'm not demonstrating fully what to do, but you'll get the idea. Heading down towards this right-hander then. On the right-hand side there, you've got an ambulance. And I can't exactly see what it is. Two vehicles in the field on the right. As they hit the edge of your screen, that is when you're going to break. There we go, on the brakes, and try and get it turned in to really clip the kerb. And we just missed the kerb, but we do it much better than MB30 there as we head up the hill. So get over to the right side, and you're gonna look at the kerb, and you're looking for that big black old mark there on the kerb. That is what I use every single time for this left hand. It's a beautiful marker, uh, and one to use. You could use the barrier, in fact. I've just noticed there's a white marker there. You could use that. Try and use a lot of the inside. Then as you go towards this right hander, okay. See this great bit here? You can touch that. But if you go over that at any point, you will get a penalty. So be careful. That's how Shelty got the penalty. If you go further over, you will get a penalty. I can go over more than I did, but uh, I didn't. Do lift slightly for that left hander because it just makes sure you get round and don't end up in Narnia. Now we're going to head down towards Banky Boy then. So Banky Boy. There's only one obvious marker here. You've got about 10 of them on the left hand side, but we're going to use a 50 meter board. So heading towards the 50 meter board. Notice that there. We're going to try and break as close to that as possible. Moving on to braking. I did, we did have a chat about this in Discord after me and MB30. So you can see they were to the right and then they come back left there. And it just wasn't enough of a car size gap. So if I'd gone for the left, it's a difficult one. It's that moving under the braking. If, if you do that, it's, you are risking a punt. It's the same as the reactive braking. You have to be so careful. Uh, but use the camera of Banky Boy to get through that corner. I'm going to look down the inside of MB30 now uh, as we head towards this right-hander. There's a gap in the trees there. That's what I use from now on. I used to use the uh, the curb markings, but I, I'm, I'm go that's my go-to marker for this corner. Uh, and they will vary as you go through GT7 as well, which hopefully we'll hear about on Thursday. I think it's Thursday, isn't it? So uh, the second part of this corner, end of the curb, that's when you're slowing the car down. It's just a slight you know, dab of the brakes here. Trying to slow the car down as much as possible and try and get the inside wheels on the inside of the curb if you can that'll be perfect and then through here then we're right behind mb30 so i'm going to stop a little bit early here pointing out the brake marker here so you have bullet signs on the left hand side the last bullet sign the edge of that as it gets to the edge of your screen that is your brake marker for this last corner so here we go then so i break slightly early here mb30 breaks slightly a bit too late there we're gonna have a good run through this last corner then MB30 goes left initially, then goes back right. Uh, and we've had a fantastic race here with MB30. It's got to be said. Uh, good little lap of racing there. But down the inside, tries to go for releasing the brakes early. Doesn't quite work out there. Space left on the outside there. And we get that position. Happy days. Brilliant race there, MB30. But you see, with the traffic, we've lost so much time to the guys that pitted one lap earlier. That's how critical it is in terms of the strategy. And you can see there, Consta and Romero did actually overtake Quinton. Quinton's push for those tyres didn't really work in terms of winning the race. But he was a damn slight, uh, damn sight close to winning that race. I will get my words out in that flawless Peugeot. So shout out to Consta, Consta there for the victory. And that's going to be it for this week's weekly race card. I do hope you enjoyed it. Race C is my go-to race this week. If I was you, I would do this. Lots of strategy in there, lots of racing potential, and hopefully lots of fun with a variety of cars included. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to stay in touch with the content. As always, likes cost you nothing and uh, they help the channel out massively. 
Two videos there if you want to check them out, including the do's and don'ts of racing. Very well worth a watch. But enjoy your racing, enjoy your week, enjoy your rest of your life if you don't turn up again. Uh, but that's it for me now, folks. Thank you, au revoir, and farewell.